This video was originally recorded May 2018 in New York City at Tibet House and is a part of the Force for Good class series. To watch more videos from this series, please visit TibetHouse.us. Because something in the um, nature of the Buddhist training, certainly of the Theravada school in which I was so largely trained, uh, really tends to emphasize the problem. It's almost like the motto is, let's get real. Um, and what's real for most people is the direct experience of the problem, and that's where we start. It's with that honest and open and loving uh, experience of <coughs> what the problem is. But I always remember I wrote one book <coughs> called um, Real Happiness at Work. And the first time I met with the editor, we were just in like a pan quotidian somewhere near here. And she said to me, what do you want the chapter headings to be? In other words, what do you want the table of contents? to look like, and I said, oh, how about like burnout and exhaustion and <laughs> moral injury, and she looked absolutely horrified, and she said, how about like balance <laughs> and integrity and, you know, whatever, and I said, that's, yeah, that's like what I said, you know, but, um, and for me, there is something so reassuring about words like addiction, anxiety, and depression. Uh, because for one thing, it, it uh, tends to be uh, a feeling of inclusion, you know, rather than if you were to experience one or all of those uh, conditions to feel that you're somehow marginalized or left out or excluded, uh, the stigma of that, um, it, right away, that's, that's a declaration. You know, to say, okay, this, this is around which we are gathering. Um, and there's also the invitation, of course, to be different with all of these things. Because the, the purpose of that kind of exploration is not to just kind of go round and round and round and round. Um, the same experiences we have every day but to see what it's like when we approach with love and release and understanding. And what that different framework, that different context, that different holding environment, which I learned from Mark uh, in terms of beyond, um, you know, what, what does that do? So uh, I also thought of um, in Buddhist teaching where uh, they so often talk about these three main uh, roots of our suffering, grasping, aversion, and delusion. Uh, grasping, holding on, clinging, attachment, aversion being anger, or anger and fear in some schools, and delusion being, uh, in this context, sort of being cut off and being confused, being um, spaced out, you know, not connecting to what your experience is. And I uh, thought about this time when I was working on a book on faith, called Faith, and uh, everything in my mind, everything in the world as I, could, as I was seeing it in those days was about faith. And I thought about those three tendencies of holding on and pushing away and uh, that kind of spaced out, numbing out, as being really ways of having misplaced faith or misplaced trust, trust. Something in us, in those states, lost in those states, believes that if we could only hold on hard enough, we would have it. You know, we would have a sense of wholeness, we'd have a sense of peace, we'd feel complete, we wouldn't ever need anything ever again. And so we cling out of that kind of uh, mistaken notion and so too with 
uh, that feeling that somehow if we can push away that which is painful, we'll be in control, we'll have mastered things, um, we'll have proven our worth, uh, that we'll be able to keep unpleasant things from arising again, ever. And somehow also with, with that kind of delusion or numbness or, or spaced out things, it, it's kind of comforting in a lot of cases, you know? not to feel and just to zone and, and be sort of skating on the surface like that. And, um, to be in that little cocoon where uh, you're kind of nestled in, you know, and, and cut off. And we think, okay, that's the resolution, that's the answer. And just so I think of anxiety or depression or uh, addiction in some ways as these manifestations of this deep, deep yearning we all have as human beings to be happy, to be free, to have a sense of belonging, to feel a part of, to find a home somewhere, you know, in this body, in this mind, in, with other people on this earth, somewhere. But of course, it's all interlaced with not knowing, with not understanding, with myths we've been taught, lies we've been told. Um, you know, our own mistaken notions. And so uh, we also confuse that yearning for the problem, but I think the yearning is the point that that's appropriate. It's not something to feel squeamish about or, um, you know, embarrassed about. Uh, it's appropriate, it's rightful. It's right to want to be happy. People often say, I don't know, you know, like, seems to me that, you know, my generosity is really tainted, as an example, because I know that if I'm generous, I'll be happier, and therefore it's not a pure act, it's really selfish. It's, it's really for my own happiness. And, and I always say, well, that's not greed, that's science. That's like having figured out something about the universe. You know, if you withhold and you're withdrawn and you can't connect and you can't give and you never relinquish anything and you're you know, just holding on, you're not very happy. <laughs> that, that's true. <clears throat> and if you connect and you care and you offer and you, you wish well to others and you, you give, you have a kind of generosity of the spirit and you thank people and you smile at people and you pay attention to people, you'd be a lot happier. That's also true. If you figured it out, you know, that's good. Like, we wouldn't have to shy away from that. And so, um, you know, the main thing I was thinking of for tonight and emphasizing was, first of all, honoring that wish to be happy and, and to see that not as a problem. But in some ways, when that urge toward happiness, or, or we could call it yearning, um, is aligned with wisdom instead of with ignorance, it can really be our homing instinct for freedom. We can cut through many, many obstacles. And when we're caught in something we're caught. You know, a story we've told ourselves, a story others have told us about us that we now believe, a story about where happiness is to be found, where strength is to be found, where courage is and daring and, um, you know, being bold and different. And uh, Does it always have to be kind of painful? Um, you know, where do we find release? Where do we think relief will be? Is it in <coughs> seeking control over what really could never be controlled? Or is it in being able to step back from that, you know, and, and being able to be with different kind of energies, even if they're, they're sort of difficult? And just sometimes to, to actually almost um, play a game with yourself or have a, a kind of session of, of active imagination it's kind of interesting, like, where do I believe happiness is to be found? And uh, what do I feel strength lies within? And what makes me distinct and have something to give? Uh, the, the next... This video was brought to you in part through the generous support of the Tibet House U.S. membership community and viewers like you. To learn more about the benefits of Tibet House membership, 
including special trips with Robert Thurman and friends with geographic expeditions, please visit TibetHouse.us. Tashi Delek, and thanks for tuning in.